everyone, this is your student nurse Shekaina Aquino Maranga and for today's video, I am going to perform the basic life support for adults, children, infants, and newborns return demonstration. Basic life support is an emergency management provided by the first responders, healthcare providers, and public safety personnel to people who are experiencing cardiac arrest, respiratory distress, or an obstructed airway. Now I am going to perform the adult cardiopulmonary resuscitation and AED skills first. I am going to begin with the assessment and activation. So I arrive on a scene and I see that the patient is unconscious or appears to be unconscious. The first thing that I'm going to do is to scan the area, check the environment for any hazard present. A hazard could be a fire, falling debris, um, chemicals or just anything that could potentially harm us because if there is a hazard present and if we do get injured we will therefore be unable to help and assist the patient now scene safety would also include the use of personal protective equipment such as gloves and a pocket face mask which I will be using later in performing CPR so this face mask will make the CPR a much safer for the rescuer as it reduces the risk of infection and it also protects the patient from contracting communicable diseases from the rescuer as well now after ensuring the scene is safe I am going to um, check the level of the, the victims um, consciousness and responsiveness by tapping the patient's shoulder and um, asking if he is okay sir sir are you okay sir can you hear me sir so after doing that uh, or while I'm doing that I am also assessing whether the patient is breathing normally is in agonal respirations or just not breathing at all so now I see that my patient um, has no movement, has no response, and is not breathing. I am going to activate the emergency response system. How are we going to do that? We'll have to ask a bystander to call 911 immediately. You, sir, in black shirt, call 911 immediately. We have a patient here in need of help. So after doing that, I am going to turn back to my patient and then um, check uh, the patient's uh, pulse and breathing again. So the if the patient is wearing constrictive clothing, we'll have to um, loosen it up and um, we'll have to check the patient's mouth as well um, to see if there are any anything that is in there that causes an obstruction of the airway. We also have to um, remove dentures if there are any. So I am going to check my patient's pulse and breathing. 1, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010. So I have determined that my patient has no um, pulse and is not breathing and is unconscious. I am going to proceed now to um, the to performing cardiopulmonary resuscitation or the CPR. CPR is a life-saving skill that combines chest compressions with artificial ventilation to try to maintain the brain function until further measures are done to uh, restore uh, spontaneous blood circulation and breathing um, of the patient who has gone into cardiac arrest so how are we going to do the or how are we going to deliver high quality chest compressions first locate the uh, chest area of the patient place the heel of one hand um, on top of the center of the patient's chest now interlock the fingers lean over the patient's body um, have your elbows locked straight and then start doing uh, 30 chest compressions at a depth of two inches one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty now um, ensure that there is a complete chest recoil for each compression after doing the chest compression immediately um, administer two rescue breaths to the patient I am going to uh, get my bag mask or my barrier device I am going to cover my patient's mouth and nose with it and um, head tilt and chin lift to open the patient's airway and then deliver the rescue breaths 
So each rescue, rescue breath should be given um, over a second and there should be a visible chest rise for each breath. Now, after doing that, we'll have to continue doing the chest compressions and then proceed to um, rescue breaths again until an AED arrives or until um, an emergency responder arrives to take over. Now, doing 30 chest compressions and rescue breathing while waiting could be very exhausting. And if we do get exhausted, um, our compressions becomes less deep and less effective. So in order to avoid that, we'll have to ask a bystander, someone who could be easily taught how to do CPR or someone who already knows how to do CPR so that we could have someone to switch um, roles when we get tired so that we'll have enough time to regain our strength and maintain high quality chest compressions. Now I am going to proceed with the AED skills. So um, until the AED arrives, we'll have to continue doing the chest compressions and the rescue breaths until the AED is ready to analyze. So assuming that I am the second responder, what I'm going to do is to turn on the AED. After turning it on, I am going to quickly scan the uh, patient's chest if the patient's chest is hairy, we'll have to uh, quickly trim the areas in which the patches of the AED will go because um, hair will act as a barrier and then the AED might not be able to deliver the greatest shot. So AED um, is also known as the um, automated external defibrillator. It is a complex yet simple to use medical equipment that analyzes the heart's rhythm and if necessary administers an electric shock or defibrillation to help the heart re-establish an effective rhythm. So now I am going to um, place the patches. One will go over uh, the upper uh, right area of the chest just below the clavicle and the other one will be placed um, beneath the patient's armpit just below the nipple line okay so um, when we have placed the patches already um, the AED will start analyzing the heart's rhythm and it might tell us to stop doing the compressions and the rescue breaths as it is still analyzing so for after a while the AED will um, might tell us to um, stay away from the patient to clear away from the patient and not touch the patient because it will have to uh, deliver a an electric shock so when that happens what we're going to do is to everybody clear deliver a shot in three two one shot delivered after doing that the AED um, will tell us to resume um, with the 30 chest compressions and uh, rescue breaths for um, how many cycles and then after that, it will reanalyze again the patient's heart rhythm and if necessary, still, um, it will deliver a an electric shock. So, we'll continue doing that until the AED tells us to stop or until the patient um, has already been revived. So, after everything, after doing all the procedure, um, we'll have to uh, document the procedure done, um, the time, uh, the the resuscitation started up until the time um, it ended. Now I am going to proceed with the pediatric resuscitation. So this involves a child or an infant who needs immediate resuscitation. So basically the steps in doing this procedure is just the same um, with the adult CPR. The only difference is the number of hands or fingers used in the chest compression. So to begin, we'll still have to check the environment, make sure that the scene is safe. Next, we'll have to uh, check the patient's level of consciousness. And if the patient is not responding, then we'll have to activate the emergency response system. Baby, baby, can you hear me? Baby, baby, can you hear me? Sir, in black shirt, please call 911 immediately. We have a patient here in need of immediate help. Now, um, after doing that, we'll have to uh, check the um, patient's ABCs, the airway, breathing, and circulation. We'll have to um, open the patient's airway. So, if the patient is wearing a constrictive clothing, we'll have to um, loosen it up 
we can also do the head tilt chin lift to uh, still open the airway now after doing that we'll have to uh, check for the patient's breathing using the look listen and feel method look for um, the chest's rise and fall then listen for breath sounds and then feel for respirations of air one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so the patient is not breathing i'm going to um, give the patient two rescue breaths i'm going to get my face mask Cover the patient's mouth and nose with it and deliver two rescue breaths. So after doing that, check again um, the patient's uh, breathing and pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I see that the patient is not breathing and is and has no pulse. I am now going to proceed with um, doing the cardiopulmonary resuscitation so my patient here is an infant infants are within the age range of a uh, one month to one year old and so in order to deliver chest compressions we'll have to use um, two to three of our fingers or we could also do the um, two thumb technique wherein um, we encircle the baby's body using our hands and then let our thumbs rest on the uh, chest area of the patient and then start the compressions but i'm going to use the two to three finger method locate the lower uh, breastbone of the patient just below uh, the nipples and then start giving chest compressions at the rate of 100 to 120 um, compressions per minute one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. After doing that, immediately give the patient two rescue breaths. Now, um, we'll have to do uh, this compressions and rescue breaths until the help arrives or until the next responders arrive to take over. Now, ensure that in doing chest compressions um, there is a complete chest recoil and then the depth of the compressions is only at one to one and a half um, inches because we don't want to um, fracture the baby's bones also for every rescue breath there should be a visible chest rise now if the patient is a child so children are within the age range of one year old to eight year old um, we'll have to uh, perform the chest compressions using one hand place the heel of one hand still at the lower half of the breastbone and then give the patient uh, 30 compressions to rescue breaths one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So still, um, the depth of the uh, chest compressions should be at one to one and a half inches and then give the patient rescue breath. Now after doing that, continue doing the uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Um, for at least five cycles and then check the patient for um, signs of return of circulation okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty now if um, the patient already has a return of circulation we have to place the patient in the recovery position so how do we do the recovery position we'll have to place the arm um, that is nearest to you in a right angle and then grab the hand um, that is at the farther side place the back of the other hand on the patient's cheek and then um, hold it there grab the uh, farther knee flex it and then grasp the leg to roll the patient to his side that is the recovery position after doing that we'll have to wait for the rescue responders and then um, after everything i will have to document the uh, procedure done 
Now I am going to perform the newborn cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So since this is a newborn, the first thing that we'll have to do is to determine the baby's APGAR score. APGAR is a quick test done at 1 minute and at 5 minutes after birth. The 1 minute would tell us how well the baby tolerated the birthing process and the APGAR score at 5 minutes would tell us how well the baby is doing outside the mother's womb. Now, um, for this return demo, let's say that the baby has an APGAR score of 3, which we know falls within the concerning range. This means that the baby is in need um, for an immediate resuscitation. So, after determining the baby's APGAR score, we'll have to stimulate the baby's response through tapping the baby's shoulder, rubbing the soles of the feet, and calling the baby out loud. Baby, baby, are you okay? Baby, baby, are you okay? So, after doing that and the baby still has no response, we'll have to call out Code Blue or Dr. Squick so that the doctor and the nurses could um, come over and help us revive the baby. So, um, what we'll have to do next is to um, open the baby's airway. So, we'll have to suction the baby's mouth and nose using a suction bulb. Um, we'll have to remove the secretions uh, if there are any that is obstructing the baby's airway after that we'll all, we can also do the head tilt and chin lift to still open the baby's airway and since the baby did not respond to the stimulus we did a while ago um, we'll have to perform the positive pressure ventilation so there are two types of positive pressure ventilation or PPV uh, it could be through the invasive, which is through the use of a um, ventilator, or the non-invasive one, which is through the use of a pediatric, pediatric bag mask. So for this demo, I am going to use a bag mask. So here is my bag mask. What I'm going to do is to cover the baby's mouth and nose with it. Now, hand position would be the thumb and forefinger of one hand will be placed at the rim of the bag mask. Um, then to ensure pressure seal and uh, the remaining fingers will be placed in the jawline on the jawline of the baby this is done so that our hand is not um, leaning on the patient's eyes is not compressing the baby's neck and is supporting the baby's head so we'll be uh, delivering oxygen to the baby be sure that to maintain um, proper pacing. So what we're going to do is to uh, breathe two, three, 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 breathe two, three. So um, PPV, PPV should be done um, for at least 30 seconds or at a rate of 40 to 60 breaths per minute. Now, um, after doing that, someone will be attaching a heart monitor to the baby and a pulse oximeter to um, keep track of the baby's heart rhythm and the pulse oximeter measures the hemoglobin oxygen saturation. Um, this will help us uh, monitor um, the, eff the efficacy of the CPR. So um, if there is no increase of heart rate after uh, performing the PPV, we'll have to uh, proceed and perform uh, chest compressions and rescue breaths. So how are we going to do chest compressions? So since this is a baby, we can uh, do uh, or use two to three fingers and locate the um, lower half of the uh, breastbone of the baby and start the compressions. And we could, but we could also do the two thumb technique, wherein we are going to encircle the baby's uh, body using our hand encircle the thoracic area of the baby and then let the two thumbs rest at the center of the baby's chest and then start doing the compressions but i am going to do the two to three finger um, technique i am going to begin chest compressions um, 30 chest compressions to rescue breaths and um, chest compressions would be at um, a depth of one inch only since the baby the baby's bones isn't strong enough isn't sturdy enough to handle immense pressure and we don't want to harm the baby by fracturing uh, the baby's ribs or rib cage now um, I'll begin doing the chest compression 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then give two rescue breaths. And then do uh, repeat the chest compressions again. So um, we'll have to continue doing that for at least four cycles and then if still after doing the CPR there's still no increase of heart rate um, we'll have to continue doing the CPR and prepare to assist for an intubation intubation is where a doctor will insert a tube through the patient's mouth or nose down to the trachea to keep uh, the trachea open and allow air to pass through now um, if the baby, however, if the baby has an increase of heart rate after the compressions and the rescue breathing, then we can proceed to the post-resuscitative care, wherein um, we could refer to the uh, post-resuscitative care algorithm because we could find there the procedures and tests that needs to be done to ensure that the baby is doing fine and that, and that the baby's body system are working. So, um, two post-resuscitative care I know is through monitoring the administered oxygen um, concentration and the arterial oxygen saturation. So, after doing everything, doing the procedures, we'll have to proceed to the documentation process wherein we'll have to um, input the time um, it started until the time it ended and also the response of the baby to the medication and treatment.